We are going to talk with Chris in New Jersey next. Chris has questions around consciousness, which I think is a harken back to the last couple conversations we've had on this show. Okay. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you. Happy Sunday. Thank you. Happy Sunday. What did you want to talk about? Or wait, no, V, you brought it up already. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about consciousness. What are your thoughts? I might be a little late here, but uh, I listened to the conversation you guys had. We actually talked once before on your last show about justified true belief. And stuff. Okay, okay. perfect. In the, in, the com- in the conversation you guys had about consciousness, I feel like in some ways you were kind of avoiding, I think, what seems to me to be one of the most apparent things about what consciousness is, which is the awareness, uh, the ability to have a subjective experience. Like we taught, you touched on it in qualia, Mm -hmm. but, but I feel like a lot of more of the focus you guys had was on the processing ability of, of sensory information. And I don't really think that, that, that serves true to what consciousness really is. Interesting. Okay. So you you would say consciousness is the ability to have a subjective experience. Correct. Okay. Interesting. So when I when when I go ahead, I'm sorry. No, go for it. So like when I think about like these uh, elusive terms like consciousness or spiritual, I just think of like what's the most common denominator, and I think like the reason that most people would colloquially agree that plants are not conscious, whereas animals are whereas machines aren't, even though they can process information, whereas humans are, is that ability, that inner feeling of of, uh, having that subjective experience. Hmm. Uh, Okay, can we, I'm I'm trying to, like I'm trying to process that. So what other things fit into that category? Like I can say that my eyeballs give me the ability to see. So would your consciousness give you the ability to like, like that? Or do you mean like, like, like how can we use that to better understand consciousness? Because it sounds really good, but I'm trying to put it into action. And it sounds like it's carrying this implicit piece that consciousness exists kind of ontologically. Like there's an organ attached to consciousness. Um, and I, I, I just want to make sure that we're on the same page or, you know, wh- where are you going? Right. And these are muddy waters. And I want to try to avoid like a soul of the gaps here, mm-hmm. <laughs> which, <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right. which it, it leaves room for, if we're being honest, but you know, it's like, that's not a easy, that's not an explanation. But I also think they're kind of like two different questions, which is one is how is consciousness formed, which could come about through, you know, uh, a very, um, intricate processing ability who knows that eventually like that'll unlock the conscious state and what consciousness is so what i'm referring to right now and what i said is what consciousness really is which is the ability to have that subjective experience okay so is an unconscious person conscious by that definition because they can they're just not currently i think that uh the term conscious is misused there when it should be like wakeful Okay. So, like, we call it conscious and unconscious. I think that's just the wrong term to use. I agree with that. And I think that so was I, part of the conversation we had where we're trying to dis- parse unconscious versus not conscious. And yeah. I think I think using conscious as, like, awake or not awake is it, it, we risk running into the um, equivocation fallacy there because we're talking about two different things that happen to have the same word. And they're they're connected, but one means are you awake and aware of your surroundings that we're not. And the other is the concept of the capability of being awake and aware of your surroundings. Well, I don't know. I don't know, because I I would think of that more as, you know, like like you have this internal narrative that is just continuing to go. You have this story about yourself that you're continuing to tell about yourself. You wake up, you go, okay, I woke up, you know, I took a shower, I ate breakfast, I went and had my day, and then I fell asleep, right? That, That is a continuous story that you're telling about yourself. And I think that when you're not conscious, you're not telling that story to yourself about yourself. And, you know, you, you, you have a lapse. Right. And so when you pick back up and you start that story again, you know, I, I would think of that as consciousness, right? That, that, that is that experience of receiving that sense data. And so I'm not trying to necessarily conflate those terms, but to me, I think that they actually 
work well together that if I want to know whether or not someone is conscious, I need to understand that if something is capable of consciousness uh, versus being not conscious, you know, it, it's, it's a really beneficial place to go. I, I, I just, I don't know. I, I don't think I'm conflating or uh, two separate things like that. I think that they're, I think they go hand in hand. I could be wrong, but I, I feel like the 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 fear that I have around that is we tend to then get into this conversation, which is a semantic one, a pragmatics one around how we're using this word and if it's equivocation or not, versus moving into the deeper conversation, which is. Do we have subjective experience? Is there a way to prove that we have subjective experience? And if there is not a way to prove that we have subjective experience, is this a worthwhile conversation if we also hold other things to that standard as well? No. Okay. Chris, just so you know, do you see what you started? Do you see what we did? This is your <laughs> fault, Chris. Um, no, because I should feel I like be you- proud mo- or, or ashamed? You, no, you should be proud. Definitely <laughs> proud. Anybody who um, can get us to argue should be proud of Yeah. It. I, I disagree because you've now moved the conversation into qualia. We can talk about qualia. Well, that's what that's what Chris. I think he said we we touched but on I, qualia. Yeah, but, uh, but but I think qualia takes it a step further. Yeah, I I, I, I think qualia. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm talking with you. No, too much. I know. I don't want to get lost in qualia either because qualia speaks more to, and I agreed with V's uh, description, a unique individual subjective experience, which is saying everyone's unique individual subjective experience is qualia. Whereas I'm saying that consciousness is simply the ability. I'm sorry, I know I was misstated. No, you're good. But, and uh, where I'm saying consciousness is just simply the ability to have a subjective experience. Okay, and so, okay, that, got it. Go ahead. Got it. No, I, I, I see where you're coming from. So consciousness is the ability to experience a thing. It's, it's a descriptor of that ability, not the experience itself. Correct. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, my question, though, is... We can say, okay, we have consciousness and we are, we are defining this as the ability to have a subjective experience. Okay, that, I, I will want to run with that. But then we get into the conversation of, okay, well, we have a, a soul and a soul is the ability to have a subjective experience. So now we have two things and both are hinged on the ability to have a subjective experience, something that I cannot prove that I have to you sufficiently, right? You can take it on, you know, common sense and and faith, for lack of a better term, that the people around you are experiencing subjective experience. Um, but there's no real way to prove that. And so my only concern here is that it leaves the door open to other claims that cannot be substantiated or falsified if we don't add other things onto it, like processing like the, the, the requirement of a nervous system or a neural network of some kind. So like, I, I agree with you, but I don't think I would say that's all it is because we could easily then just swap consciousness out for any other word and be equally as provable. Does that make sense? That is very, I think that's very fair. And that's also an area I want to avoid because mm-hmm. claiming soul as the reason is just an unjustified claim, right? Right, exactly. But at the same time, but at the same time, I also feel that in our current understanding of science, we can't really justifiably add much to that definition that's truthfully. Yeah, and that's, that's why this conversation is so much fun, because there isn't a, a, a definitive decision made yet scientifically about all of this. And so we are still in that kind of soul of the gaps area where we're trying to come up with Uh, the best way to describe this thing, especially if it ties into ethical questions like how do we treat things that aren't human? How do we treat computers and AI and all of this? We can't just assume that consciousness is something only humans have. And so we want to make sure we're able to define it sufficiently that we can kind of base decisions on that moving forward. But yeah, it's 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 an interesting conversation. I, I could go on about this all day. <laughs> I, I think the, the conversation around computers has been also been taken the wrong way. Because oftentimes we talk about artificial intelligence and machine learning mm-hmm. in a way where we we make it synonymous with artificial consciousness, which I think is a whole different conversation. It, it, well, 
Maybe. It totally depends on what you're talking about consciousness. Because right. if we're disagreeing on consciousness, then it could be depending on what you're calling it. Like if 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 you're talking about, you know, like what I was saying with having a, a narrative, um, I personally I don't think that I'm so unique and special that a computer could not become conscious. I I, I just I'm not necessarily convinced that it's happened yet, but I don't see why I would categorically place that as something that's incapable of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this uh, is definitely uh, a larger conversation and I do want to move on, Chris, but thank you for watching the show. Thank you for calling yeah. in. And if you have further thoughts, I would love to continue this conversation next week. Absolutely. Thank, thank you for taking my call. Thank, thank you. you, Chris. Have a good day. You too. Yeah, I, I don't know. I can play devil's advocate across the board with that conversation because I don't have like a clear opinion of it myself I, yet. I I feel like you slide right into qualia though every time. I like I, I I feel like we settle if we agree on the consciousness thing then we can settle on it and then talk about qualia. But when it gets qualia gets dragged into consciousness like that, then we need to unpack consciousness again. It feels like well, it feels like uh, what what Chris was bringing to the table, the ability to have a subjective experience, is the ability to have what I would assume, and this might be my error, is qualia, because the other option is that it is not a unique subjective experience, and we are all experiencing the same things, in which case that feels weirder to me and less intuitive. Not saying it's wrong, but if we can agree that subjective experience is a component of consciousness, a, a crucial component, then there really feel to me only two options. Either that subjective experience is actually truly subjective and unique to the individual, which would be qualia, or it's not unique to the individual, in which case we enter this kind of panpsychism. Like, I, 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 I disagree because I think you're using that in, in, in a weird way. You know, if, if we're talking about driving a car, the experience of driving is part of driving a car. And then we're taking that experience and going, well, then it's just as important as the wheels and the, you know, the, uh, the engine and the doors and the hood and the, and, and the boot and, and, and the headlights. And so we need to include that when we're talking about a car, the, the experience of driving it. No, I, I, like you can drive a car, yes, but if you're listing out the parts of a car, you're not going to list that out in the same way. And I feel like we treat qualia as an experience that is treated as a thing. It goes in the list of car parts instead of in a, this is what happens when you have a car. You know what I mean? So when you're talking about existence that way, you're treating it as a, as, as, as a, almost as a noun instead of Sorry, a verb. Sorry, existence? Sorry, consciousness <laughs> or qualia. This, okay. You're treating it as kind of a noun instead of a verb. And that's what's bugging me. Maybe adverb. Maybe I'm not using that correctly. Well, you know we can I mean. qualia about this later, I guess. We can. Um, uh, all right. Uh, 